morning. <laughs> day six. Six. Day, day six. six. We uh, were supposed to go whale watching today at noon, but it got postponed again until tomorrow. I'm not entirely sure why. As you can see by John's t-shirt, the weather is lovely here today. It's sunny. The ocean looks pretty calm, which I'm sure you'll see a clip of soon. Right now. <laughs> I don't know how much you can actually see from that, but that's okay. Beautiful though. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. But uh, yeah, so plans changed. So we're just going to do a bunch of sightseeing today, uh, drive around, some more spots. But we're actually at the first one already. We were able to walk from our hotel. Mm -hmm. So our first stop today is this big obelisk behind me. It was built in 1856 uh, in commemoration of King Pedro IV coming to Tercera and he came because it was in the middle of the Portuguese Civil War and they actually built it out of stones that he stepped on when he got off of the boat on the island so that's pretty neat I guess. It's windy. It's windy up here. What a shocker. Was beautiful and sunny. I mean it still looks great over here but um, it's really windy and it got cold and if I flip you around it's not looking so great out there. The, uh, the weather changes in a span of two and a half minutes here. It's uh, Pretty crazy. In the moments where it's not too windy, it is nice to be up here. You get a really good view of the entire city. So this big green pipe here, we actually learned about this from Ruben the other day. It goes all the way down into the city in Angra, but if you follow it back up the other way, we can't even see where it ends. But he showed us from a different lookup point. It goes way up into the mountains, farther than we can see. And there's a big water catchment tank. And it actually collects a lot of the rainwater. And that's how they get quite a bit of the water into the city. We've said it before, we'll say it again. Everything here is small and connected. From the obelisk we were just at, there's a staircase. that goes right down into the gardens of the Duke of Tercera, which are behind me right here, that we're going to walk down into. And I don't know if you can see it directly from here, but our hotel literally backs onto the gardens. So everything is very, very close. So there's our hotel, this is part of the park, and then right behind part of the park, bananas. They grow them right here. Oh look, it's sunny again. Well this is a good time to tell you about why all the sightseeing we're doing today will probably be outdoors. That is because today is April 25th, which is Freedom Day in Portugal. It is to commemorate the Carnation Rebellion, which was a bloodless coup in 1974, by left-leaning officials in the army. The results of the Carnation Rebellion was the transition of Portugal to a democracy and the end of the colonial wars in Africa, which I think are both things that we can look upon very highly today. So one cool thing about this garden right behind our hotel is uh, they have tons of different species of uh, trees and plants and flowers and each tree um, is marked with a little marker telling you where it came from. So this one came from Japan. And then if we just, you know, pop over here to the next little tree. This one doesn't have any buds, so I don't know what it's actually supposed to look like. But um, if I can zoom in here, 
This one came from China. So it's a really lovely park. They take really great care of it. Super manicured. You can see there's a little pond with a small fountain in it. That's our hotel back there. And then one of these trees up here, the really large ones, actually we noticed it came from Australia. So I think that's just really neat that because of the climate here, they can grow things that you can't in other places. Like in Canada, we could never imagine having these kinds of things year round. And um, because they get them from different places, I don't, I'm not sure if they're given to them or if they just acquire them from there, but yeah, they put little plaques on them so you can tell where they're from. So all over the island, we've found that a lot of the sidewalks, the roads are really intricate cobblestones. And we actually saw somebody doing some repair work on the other, on some of this cobblestone the other day. And it is super tedious. They have to by hand hammer in each one of these individual cobblestones. And so right now they're redoing this entire road. And I can only imagine how long that would take to have to actually hand hammer in each of these individual stones. One of the really nice things about port cities like this I often find is you get beautifully painted houses like this. But something that's kind of unique here in Angra, there was a really bad earthquake in 1980, I think, and something like 70 to 75% of the city was destroyed. So I think as a result of that, you end up with a bunch of buildings like this too, that look a little worse for wear. They're not really taken care of right now. And in a lot of cases, we heard from Ruben the other day, families have emigrated away and there's really no one left to take care of that, those buildings. We've seen a lot of it in the small towns too where roofs on old houses have just caved in and they're just left like that because no one in the family is left here to take care of them. Here's just another example, abandoned house. And this one is some prime real estate right down the street from the only McDonald's on the island. So we just finished lunch. Uh, we did. Pretty unfortunate steaks, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, certainly not anywhere close to the best we've had here. <laughs> yeah, but they do so much cattle here that, you know, I would think the steaks would be really good. We won't slander this place though. We'll just... I mean, it was good service. Good service. So drinks we had were good, but yeah, I mm -hmm. wouldn't recommend the steak which is probably like 50 percent of what's on their menu so mm -hmm. that's true yeah like definitely 50 percent maybe their fish is really good though maybe but it's really not why we're filming this it's more because we're walking back towards the car uh because we're gonna go drive this afternoon and we came across the street with like very different housing than we've seen anywhere else so far so yeah this is what that looks like so I guess this is more of like the residential area. Most of the houses we've been looking at are kind of right around the main road of the island and they're all packed tightly together. And these are like semi-detached, like we'd actually see back home and they're all super colorful. So yeah, a little bit of a unique housing experience here. So we're walking back to our car. We saw a bunch of people with instruments heading up the road. And then we saw a bunch of people sitting outside the cathedral, which is behind us here. And I think there's a Freedom Day parade. And now there's no traffic going down this road. So we're gonna sit and watch the Freedom Day parade. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, we think. Happy Freedom Day, Portugal. <laughs> Is starting, but a tour group is trying to cross the road and they're about to get run over by freedom. <laughs> Must be nice to have a balcony right along the parade route. Here's some cars have made it onto the parade route. I don't know how this will be remedied. 
second car is a rental, and I'm sure they're very panicked right now. What would happen if we drove onto the parade? Right? I don't know, but the parade is definitely not done. No, it's There's not over. Yeah. We saw these white jackets, and we hadn't seen them through all seven waves of the parade. They're here now. This must be the grand finale. We were wrong. wrong. There's more. <laughs> it was not the grand finale. <laughs> Head of the car because we thought it was over, but as you can hear, it's never over. False. Two minutes later, it's actually over now. Ten waves. Ten. That's a lot of waves. <laughs> So part of being in a different country sometimes means running back to your hotel because you forgot things. So I am sitting on a street corner <laughs> while John, John runs back to the hotel to grab the car keys. We're probably about a six minute walk, so I think he'll probably be back in about 15. We'll see. So we made it to Mount Brazil and there are roosters. Roosters and stray cats all over the place. We've been told there's deer as well, but yeah. we haven't seen any. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, anyway, the point of going up here is the view, so take a look. <laughs> so that is Angra down below. And then way in the back, on the other side of those green fields, straight in front, is the caldera from one of the volcanoes that formed the island. There's kind of volcanoes everywhere. It's hard to really know when you're on a volcano. We're on a volcano right now, actually. The roosters are all coming over here. We did nothing to conjure them. This guy is calling them over. They're all getting awfully close. Speak again, Mr. Rooster. I can do this all day. <laughs> so yesterday we tried to go up to the highest point on the island, which is this mountain over there. And as you can see, a little foggy today too. Probably not worth trying to venture up there again. So one thing that's obvious when looking at the city from this angle is a lot of the city looks very similar. Now in 1980, when the big, big earthquake happened, just imagine 75% of these buildings being damaged or wiped out. Well, after that, the city applied to be a UNESCO World Heritage City and got approved, I think, in 1983, which means that whenever new construction happens, it has to kind of fit with the theme of the city because it is so unique and individual. But you will notice one building right here, this hotel, that looks nothing like anything else in the city. Caused a lot of controversy we heard when it was built. Uh, some theories that there was some lining of some politicians' pockets to get the building permit to, uh, to build that city. To build that building. Now, as you can tell from the top of Mount Brazil, you get an amazing view of the city. And I've been eager to take the drone up from here. It's a little windy today, and I'm also a little worried about getting it too close to anybody because I, I don't want to bother people by flying a drone around. So I took it up for a little bit, and the footage is pretty good.
So I think what I got looks pretty good. I hope it is when I go back and take a look at it later. I did get some wind warnings up here, so I didn't want to fly it for too, too long. And hopefully I'll get some more practice, which will allow me to go out for longer flights and not worry so much. But for now, hopefully that gives you a good idea of what the city looks like from above.